Building foam-based fake rocks is something which many reptile keepers try their hand at, and often it doesn't go according to plan. I'm well aware of this fact, having successfully constructed this monstrosity a couple of years ago, which was destined for the bin. Last year, I showed you how to build a rock stack out of real rocks, which I did for my Western Green Lizard enclosure. This year, I'm building something on a much bigger scale for me bearded dragon, so although I still believe that real rocks offer the best solution, they will be far too expensive and difficult to work with in this project. Therefore, I'm going to try my hand at fake rocks once more, but this time, I'm attacking it with more of a plan. The very first step was to take insulation foam boards and cut them to a general rocky shape. Each of the pieces cut out thus far will form the bottom of a rock ledge. Here you see me removing rectangles from them to house short length of batten, the purpose of which will be revealed in a moment. Next, I added additional layers of foam to give the pieces some height. The layers were stuck together using Gorilla Glue and toothpicks. Right, so the morning after um, all the stuff I was doing yesterday, I've given all of this, um, well, getting on for 24 hours to cure. Uh, the Gorilla Glue's only meant to take an hour or two, and then it's solid. And I was testing it last night, and it was solid. But I just wanted to give it the extra time, because I didn't want to be rushing yesterday, and I thought, there's no harm in making sure that it is all cured. Um, now, this is all the sort of pseudo rock work that I've got going. And as you can see from the area of it, it's about the same as the floor area or even a little bit more, in Charles' old enclosure. So this is going to add a lot more usable space for it. But what I'm going to be doing today is taking a load of knives to this stuff and carving it so that it actually looks like rocks. And then we'll be ready to um, start coating it with things. Carving was done using a knife. One thing to note at this stage is that subsequent steps will have to remove surface detail. So don't bother trying to carve to perfection. If anything, I never carved these pieces harshly enough, so most of the texture you'll see in a second was lost in the finished product. Right, so I've finished carving all the pieces. Um, I've got two of them out just so that you can see them. Obviously these are really lightweight. The Gorilla Glue did a great job of um, sticking them together. You see I can just hold it by that and no bother. Um, but now that I've done all of these, what I've got to do is set about cleaning up first and then I'm going to make the support structures for these to allow them um, to be attached to the back and sides of the enclosure. And once I've done that, we can start coating things and making it look pretty. So let's get on with it. To make the support structures, I cut batten to the right length to fit in the notches in the bottom layers of the ledges. Added angle brackets, made a hole for a screw, countersunk this hole just because countersinking holes makes everything look prettier, then used Gorilla Glue and a screw to fix the structure into the notch. Once the glue's fully cured, it'll let me screw the ledges onto the vivarium walls. This will be a much stronger solution than just using glue or silicone alone and has the added advantage of allowing me to remove the ledges at a later date. Next, I coated each ledge with a layer of mortar on the upper surface. This will be nice and hard once it's set. And just in case you are wondering why I'm doing mortaring on the floor inside the reptile room, it's because of that noise, which is rain. 
Once the mortar had set, I went over it with a roofing sealant called Chromapol. This stuff absolutely stinks and doing it inside made me feel a bit queasy, so if you can, take it outdoors. The idea behind it is that because it's rubbery and fibre reinforced, it should stop the mortar from cracking over time. One thing about it is that it does take a long time to dry, so you have got to be patient with it. Oh, Alright everyone, so uh, the Chromapol has been on for a couple of days now, and it's pretty much dry everywhere, I mean, definitely doesn't smell like it's going to destroy me lungs anymore, which it did do, and um, it was absolutely horrible. Uh, but there's little bits that are tacky, but I'm just going to ignore those because uh, today the show must go on and I want to get paint in these. Um, I mean, at the minute, they just look like sutting off the surface of the moon and they're not exactly from the outback of Australia. So I've got a load of acrylic paints. Um, at the minute, there's some on sale for a quid each, you know, and bargain. So uh, if you're wanting to do this and you're in the UK, then I would snap those up. Um, but yeah, let's get on with it. The first coat of acrylic paint was a dark brown one. Notice that I'm not using bought brown paint, but rather I'm mixing together red, yellow and black. Each time I mixed up the paint, I could add different amounts of the colours to yield a slightly different shade of brown, thus producing a more natural looking, non-uniform base coat. The finished base coat looked like this whilst it was still drying. Once the first coat was fully dry, I lightly dabbed orange and yellow paint onto the rocks to achieve the Australian look I was going for. Only tiny amounts of paint were used at this stage so that the base colour could show through and I avoided painting depressions in the rock surface to create the impression of depth. Right, so that's all of this done. I reckon it looks quite boss to be honest with you. I've never painted anything properly before. Uh, so the fact that this actually looks sort of all right is a bit of a miracle. Uh, all I've got to do now with it, now it's dry and uh, yeah, pretty rocky, is uh, I'm just gonna stick it all in the vid. Probably gonna need a helping hand with that. Um, and then when it's in, when it's in, I'll give it a little touch up for little bits and pieces I might have missed with the paint, and uh, then we'll be finished. Or so I thought. After I put the ledges into the enclosure and started decorating it with branches, I found out by accidentally knocking the branches into the ledges that the paint could very easily be lifted from the rocks. This wouldn't be an issue with something like a snake or a leopard gecko, but a bearded dragon would scratch off the paint in no time. As a solution, I finished off the ledges using clear, matte wood varnish. This stuff turned out not to be perfectly matte, 
but still, the end result wasn't bad in my opinion. Following the instructions on the tin, I applied three coats of the varnish. When the third coat was still wet, I sifted sand onto the rocks, just for some nice texture. Once the varnish had hardened, the rocks were scratch resistant and the job was complete. All in all, I reckon that this worked out quite nicely. I would pan out and show you how it all looks in situ, but as I've already decorated the enclosure and I want to save showing you the decorations for the second part of this mini-series, you're going to have to wait until the next episode. For today then, I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!